This small rectangle of glass, metal and silicon changed our lives forever. It all started on January 9th, 2007, the day the first iPhone was announced. The iPhone moment. And now, 16 years later, the puzzle pieces that will bring us to the next iPhone moment are finally falling into place. I thought I knew what could be the future after smartphones, but after some crazy news in the last few weeks, I realized I was wrong. But it was also the first time I saw a real path to the future after the smartphone era. There are four pieces of the puzzle that will bring us to the successor to the smartphone. And strap in because this is gonna be a wild ride that brings us from multimodal AI to 1960s tech demos, placing rectangle on Google Maps, and even people working on the small team that made the original iPhone making a comeback. I'm Enrico, a product manager working in tech, and this channel is about the behind the scenes, psychology and future of the tech products that we all use. We need to start our journey really fast because in smartphone land, things Things haven't been great. Smartphone sales have peaked in 2018. Now they're going down. Today, anyone that could afford a smartphone already has one. And if you want to keep making money and you can't sell more units, then the only thing that you can do is charge more. In 2016, the most expensive iPhone you could buy was the iPhone 7 Plus for $850. And today, the most expensive iPhone 15 Pro Max is $1,600. Gone are the days of excitement for the next phone that was two times faster with all new design, huge lines every year to get it. Today it's, oh look, there's another camera on the back and now there's a thermometer. I I'm not kidding, the Pixel 8 has a thermometer on the back. Smartphones are great now, don't get me wrong, but they have matured to the point where it's clear something else is bound to come. And this is the first piece of the puzzle, which is human-computer interaction. It's 1968, and your grandparents have just finished watching 2001 A Space Odyssey. And this is where the dream of a computer entity slash assistant started. The computer hull in the movie. To be clear, the dream is not for said computer to want to kill you by sending you into the dark void of space, but to have a machine that has the intelligence to really help humans and get things done. In the end, HAL is a machine. It's a cruncher of ones and zeros, but the interactions that the characters have with it is very natural and human-like. So we're gonna place our friend Hal here on this chart. But in the real world, in 1968, the only way to interact with computers was to program things in via punch cards or via programming languages like assembly. They are very close to the ones and zeros in a machine. So in this chart, they are here. And this, this is what matters to us. Or how close can we make the machine interact like a human? For example, in this assembly language, which I had the pleasure of learning a few years ago, this is how you write hello on the screen. I still have nightmares about this. So it's definitely not human-like, the gap is very large. And this gap is incredibly important, because anytime there has been a jump in this gap, the next generation of technology is created, alongside trillions of dollars of value and thousands of new companies. Again, in 1968, damn, this year was on fire. This guy, Douglas Engelbart, gives a legendary demo. It will be later called the mother of all demos, where he shows a computer controlled via mouse, where you have a graphical user interface and even video conferencing. In 1968, that's wild. And guess what? Over the next decade, some things start to happen. Some Steve guys and this other Bill guy come along. And in the 80s and 90s, we have personal computers with graphical user interfaces. And bam, trillions of dollars of value, the tech industry booms, internet comes. And then a couple of years later, we have this guy. Now you can interact with technology with a touchscreen and pinch to zoom and scrolling and it's like magic. Another jump in this gap and you know the drill, billions of dollars of new value created and new companies, blah, blah, blah. And then something else came along. Personal assistants, Siri, Google Assistant, Alexa. These were finally the closest thing to HAL and the dream of a natural computer interaction. But we all know how it went. Hey Google, turn on the light. Light Yagami is the main character of the popular manga and anime series Death Note. In the show, Light gets in contact with... But in order to get to the next big thing after smartphones, we need to make another leap here. Come up with an even easier way to interact with technology. And I know what you're thinking, and I know that you wanted to say it since five minutes ago. AI, 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 generative AI, generative AI, generative AI, 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 AI. 
Well, yes, but turns out it's not as easy as it seems. ChatGPT has opened the floodgates for LLMs, or large language models, to become mainstream, and this created a new way of interacting with technology. And in the tech world, you know something is really working when you look at how fast people are adopting it. And well, ChatGPT is the fastest product in history to get to 100 million users in only two months. And it has started a frenzy year for tech, where everyone, Everyone is now obsessed with putting AI and chatbots and LLMs everywhere in their products. And let me remind you, all this happened just in the last 10 months. Now, the dream of HAL, again, minus the dying space, is finally really here. You can finally have a conversation with a computer in a way that a human would, with an understanding of context, memory, and yes, each model has its own limitation and what it can and cannot do and whether it can access the internet, but it doesn't matter. This is a monumental shift, and this shift is the first piece of the puzzle. But there are still some problems. These LLMs are insanely expensive, not only to build, because thanks to the amount of data that it takes to train them, the costs are just insanely high, but also to run. GitHub Copilot, Microsoft GPT-based helper for coding, despite costing users $10 a month, is losing money, because it's just so expensive to run these large language models. But this is not the whole story, because for how these LLMs are successful, Successful, the big thing has come out just a few weeks ago. And this will be the key for the next iPhone moment. Multimodal AI. OpenAI has recently announced that ChatGPT has become multimodal which means that it doesn't just accept text as input, but also audio and images. And this is insanely powerful. Because if you think about it, yes, we write and we read, but the most natural way we have of interacting with the world is by speaking and looking at things. In the demo, OpenAI shows taking a picture of a bike and asking the AI how to raise the seat. Then the instructions take you to take a certain size wrench. You don't know what it is, so you take a photo of the toolbox and it just tells you which one you need. And the craziest thing here is that these language models are general purpose. This is not an AI trained on fixing bikes. This can be applied potentially to anything. But something doesn't add up. This all feels very software -y. I mean, anytime there's been a radical shift in technology, a new gadget, a new device, a new physical thing came along. Well, you're right, because since a few weeks ago, this was the playing field. Who has the biggest and meanest LLM and chatbot? But in the last couple weeks, things have taken an interesting turn into the world of hardware. First up, we have a report from The Information that OpenAI is in talks with Johnny Ive to make a physical product, a physical device. And if you don't know who Johnny Ive is, well, you should, because it's the man that literally designed what Apple has become today. So if the man who designed the most successful products in history has been brought in to build something new, it means something is happening. And another thing that's happening is the email club, my free newsletter where every week you get an exclusive video just for members of the email club going behind the scenes of how I run my YouTube business, things I'm learning along the way, and news of what's happening in the world of tech. It is completely free to join and you can do it with the link in the description. And Johnny Ive is not the only one from the old guard jumping in. Imran Chaudhry was also on the small team that worked on the original iPhone. His name was on the patent for the home screen. And together with his wife, who was also working at Apple, they recently launched Humane, an extremely secretive company that just revealed its first product, the AI Pin. A wearable that you can pin to your shirt and uses projection to project information on your hands and uses AI to communicate to you. They raised over $200 million for their company and guess who has a 14.9% stake in Humane? Yup, your boy Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. But this begs the question, why? Why are we starting to see all these AI hardware devices? Well, because we have these incredibly powerful LLMs but they are held back by the devices we are using them from. And this push for hardware devices is gonna be the key for replacing the smartphone. But there's a last category of AI hardware devices, and I believe this is gonna be the most important one. And the actual physical form factor of the device is gonna take over smartphone. Glasses. Now, I have to admit it, meta product announcements are not the ones that get me the most excited. But this time, they really knocked it out of the park with something that is not gonna be the next iPhone moment, but goes very, very close. So they announced their own AI model called Meta AI. Okay, another large tech company working on generative AI. Cool, very nice. And now you can have Mr. Beast and other celebrities talk to you as a chatbot. 
Okay, I guess. But then there was a last announcement. And that's the important one. They announced the next version of the Ray-Ban Stories Smart Glasses. And there's many improvements to the camera and audio, but the one thing that you need to care about is this. Multimodal AI embedded in the glasses. You know, let's say you're grilling with your family and you wanna know how long you need to be cooking that chicken for. Smoke a brisket for like 12 hours. You know, or you're playing pickleball and hits the line and you want to know if that's a fault, just ask your, your Ray-Ban Meta glasses and they'll respond. And this makes so much sense. And I think multimodal AI in a pair of glasses is going to be the backbone for the successor to the smartphone. Because the AI device that will bring us to the next iPhone moment will need to have three key things. First is inputs, a way of getting things in. The things that made the iPhone work where everyone else failed is multi-touch. And to unlock the phone, I just take my finger and slide it across. All right, you wanna see that again? Go to sleep. They made giving inputs to the device, whether that's typing on a keyboard or scrolling or zooming, so much more natural. And glasses are the perfect form factor because they allow these next generation devices to get inputs from your voice and also use cameras to track the environment around you. It's something that the Apple Vision Pro and the Meta Quest Pro have been doing. So tracking your hands to use them as controllers. Second, we have context, and this is the killer one. This guy is Steve Ma, inventor and wearables pioneer, and he has been wearing these prototype AR glasses for 30 years on his head. He uses them to record what's around him, and he says he can use them to recall any fact or information and just have it in there, in his field of view, in seconds, making him effectively superhuman. And this because glasses are the perfect device to create something that's constantly aware of your context, what you're seeing, what you're hearing. Pair these contexts with multimodal AI, and you can actually be superhuman. You can get guidance on anything you're seeing or hearing in context in real time. Several startups are also launching ChatGPT enabled glasses like the Lucid Light 2.0 and so many products like this one are popping out right now. But there's a third characteristic that we need to nail to get to the next iPhone moment and that's output. How does this device communicate to us? Now for audio feedback like hearing the responses that the AI is giving you, this is the easiest thing to do. The new Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses use near field speakers, but bone conducting is another technology that you can use and it can be easily implemented as well. But then we have the most difficult one, which is visual output. For smartphones, it's the screen, of course, but for this next generation, this is a great challenge. And this is also where I was totally wrong. So it's no secret that I'm a big fan of augmented reality. I'm not talking about the metaverse or things like the Apple Vision Pro and these pass-through big bulky headsets. I mean proper real augmented reality, glasses with transparent lenses where you can project things on top of them on top of the real world. And in several videos, I said how true AR is gonna be what defined the success for, of the smartphone. Well, as it turns out, I was wrong. I was thinking that augmented reality was gonna be the thing that everybody would want. The reason why the successor to the smartphone would exist. But it's not that. Augmented reality is not the end. It's the means to an end. The goal of augmented reality will not be to say, hey, oh my God, look at this cool dinosaur in my living room, but to project on top of the real world basic but useful information and interact visually with multimodal AI. Because we humans cannot absorb complex information just by hearing. We need visuals. So ironically, Google Glass, which came out in 2012 and totally flopped, was probably still the closest thing to the future of computing we've seen so far. So now we finally have all the pieces of the puzzle. A multimodal LLM that acts as the new way of interacting with your device. It also has access to the apps and services that you use, so you can really do anything. On the hardware front, glasses are the most probable form factor. They give AI and LLMs the most context of what is around you. And then even with just basic augmented reality that allows you to get information in your field of view, you can get the output of these LLMs power. And eventually one day these elements will evolve to be anchored to the world around you, using things like Geospatial API to create shared digital objects. And while the next iPhone moment is not here yet, you can still use your smartphone to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, here's another one that you might enjoy.